Are you better off saving money and getting the iPad 9, or is the iPad Air 5 worth spending almost twice as much on? The overall physical dimensions of the iPad 9 and the iPad Air 5 aren't identical, but they are very close. So whether you're using a case or not, in terms of portability, there isn't gonna be a meaningful difference between these two. There are some really important differences when it comes to the types of keyboard cases that you can use, the Apple Pencil, and also the types of display, and we'll get to those in just a bit. Now, as far as design, the iPad 9 still has a more traditional tablet design with rounded edges, larger bezels on the top and the bottom, and a home button that has Touch ID for biometric authentication. The iPad Air 5 uses the more updated design that we see on every other iPad. So we have squared off edges, rounded corners, smaller bezels, all the way around and it uses the newer touch ID which is implemented into the power button at the top. Moving on to speakers, we see very important differences. The iPad 9 only has speakers on the bottom, whereas the iPad Air 5 has two speakers, one at the top and one at the bottom. This gives the iPad Air 5 a distinct advantage when it comes to audio because when you're gaming or watching movies in landscape mode, you're getting stereo sound with a wider sound stage and it gives you more of a surround sound feel. On the iPad 9, in those situations, you only have sound coming out to one side. We'll talk about how this impacts gaming later on, but the one advantage that I will give the iPad 9, at least when it comes to audio, is that it still has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This means that you can use wired headphones or a headset, and you don't need to worry about keeping another device charged. As far as ports, the iPad 9 uses a lightning port and the iPad Air 5 uses a faster and more powerful USB-C port with a maximum transfer speed of up to 10 gigabits per second. Now in general, I want all my devices to have a USB-C port because it means that I only need one type of cable. On the other hand, Apple still uses lightning ports on all of their iPhones and on every model of the AirPods, including the $500 AirPods Max, so I'm pretty much stuck having two types of cables regardless. And I'm curious, do you think this is gonna be the last year that we see lightning ports? Now let's get back to the displays where we're getting a 10.2 inch retina display on the iPad 9 versus a 10.9 inch liquid retina display on the iPad Air 5. If we're only looking at size, I'm gonna give the edge to the iPad Air 5 because it's bigger and it has a higher resolution of 2360 by 1640 versus 2160 by 1620 on the iPad 9. Now, we're not exactly talking about a night and day difference here. It's not like we're moving up to the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, but since the footprint of both devices is about the same and I don't have to sacrifice on portability, I'm always going to lean in the direction of the larger display. I do wanna say that for the majority of the things that I do, so things like surfing the web, using different productivity apps, reading and replying to your comments, which I try to do as much as possible, and then even for things like watching video or gaming, the size of the display alone wouldn't be a reason for me to spend almost twice as much. Both displays are 60 hertz and both have a pixel density of 265 pixels per inch, 500 nits max brightness, and both are true tone displays. This means that the iPads are able to detect the color of the light in your environment and then adjust the color of the display so that white always looks white rather than yellow or blue. And now I actually wanna get into some more meaningful differences between the displays, so the types of things that may actually impact how you use your iPad. The most significant difference between the two displays is that the iPad Air 5 has a fully laminated display versus a non-laminated display on the iPad 9. This means that on the iPad Air 5, the cover glass, the touch layer, and the display are fused into a single display assembly where the image looks like it's printed right on top of the glass. On the iPad 9, there is an air gap between the display and then the combination of the cover glass and the touch layer. When you're watching movies, playing games, or surfing the web, this isn't something that you're going to notice unless you really look for it. But when you're using the Apple Pencil, you will notice it. With the iPad Air 5, because the image looks like it's right on top of the glass, it's going to look like the tip of the pencil is actually touching the line or the content that you're creating. With the iPad 9, you're going to be able to see that separation, especially if you're looking at an angle, and that's because of the air gap. Now, I've used both types of displays for years, so I can tell you that when I'm taking notes or if I'm using the pencil for photo editing or doing basic sketching or simple vector graphics, 
I have absolutely no problems with the non-laminated display on the iPad 9. On the other hand, if you're a serious artist and drawing is the primary use for this tablet, then you'll definitely appreciate having the iPad Air 5. This is not just because of the fully laminated display, but it's also because of the different type of Apple Pencil that you can use, which I'll get to in a minute. Now, to finish off talking about the display, the iPad Air 5 has an anti-reflective coating and the iPad 9 doesn't. So if the majority of the time you're gonna be using your iPad outside or in environments where you'll have to deal with bright lights reflecting off your display, the iPad Air 5 is the better option. In my opinion, both are still fairly reflective and adding an anti-reflective screen cover will provide a much more significant improvement in managing reflections. One practical advantage of the iPad 9 has to do with potential damage to the display. Most of the time, if you crack the display, you're only damaging the cover glass. And since that's a separate component on the iPad 9, it's much less expensive to replace. On the iPad Air 5, since all three layers are fused together, even if you only damage the cover glass, the entire display assembly has to be replaced, which of course is more expensive. So if you're giving this device to a child or if you use it in an environment where it's likely to get damaged or if you're just not super careful like I am, Keep all of that in mind. Now I wanna go back to the Apple Pencils. So the iPad 9 is only compatible with the first generation Apple Pencil, and the iPad Air 5 is only compatible with the second generation Pencil. As far as the actual feel of the contact point with the glass, they're virtually identical. But in terms of the overall experience, the second generation Apple Pencil is the clear winner. First of all, it's a little more comfortable to hold because it has a flat edge, and then it also pairs wirelessly and can be stored and charged on the side of the iPad Air 5, so it's always ready to use. The first generation Apple Pencil charges using the lightning port on the iPad 9, and this works just fine, but it means that you do have to remember to charge it. You need to be really careful when you leave it sticking out of the iPad so you don't damage either device. Then there's also no way to attach it to the iPad 9 without some sort of case. Finally, with the second generation Apple Pencil, you can also assign a function to the double tap functionality, which lets you switch between tools, switch from your current tool to the eraser, or bring up the color palette. And if you wanna learn more, watch this video right here. When we look at keyboard cases, both have some great options. If you want a Magic Keyboard, that's only available with the iPad Air 5. Now, Apple does have a smart keyboard for the iPad 9, but it's not one of my favorite accessories. If you're looking at third-party manufacturers, then there are some outstanding choices for both iPads, and of course, you can pair both with an external keyboard and a mouse if that's something that you wanna do. Now both iPads have an ultra wide 12 megapixel front facing camera with center stage, which is a feature that uses artificial intelligence to identify and then follow a subject as it moves through the frame. It can then zoom in and out to make it look like the camera is panning or tilting to follow the subject. Now at first, I didn't really think that this would be a feature that I would like, but now it's definitely something that I want on my iPhone. You can use center stage for video calls with FaceTime and with Zoom, and you can even use it for making TikTok videos, but I am surprised that you can't use it with a regular camera app if you just wanna record a video and save it to the iPad. Hopefully this is something that Apple adds soon. When we look at the rear facing camera, the iPad Air 5 has the edge with a 12 megapixel F1.8 camera with smart HDR3 for photos versus an eight megapixel F2.4 camera on the iPad 9 with HDR for photos. And if you're not sure what any of these terms mean, we're getting high resolution photos, better low light performance, and better post-processing for HDR photos with the iPad Air 5. Now I mostly use the rear facing cameras on my tablets for scanning documents. So for me, this isn't necessarily a big selling point, but if you're looking for the best camera system on one of these iPads, that would be the iPad Air 5. The processor on the iPad Air 5 was also upgraded this year from the A14 to the same M1 chip that Apple uses on their top of the line iPad Pro. Now, as you probably expect, the M1 outperforms the A13 Bionic chip on the iPad 9 for both single core and multi-core performance. But let's talk about actual real life use. For things like surfing the web, for doing email, working with various productivity apps, taking notes, and for watching videos, not really going to notice a major difference because both chips are extremely powerful. If you plan on using your iPad for much more demanding tasks like editing and rendering video, then you will notice a boost in performance and you'll need to consider whether that's worth the increase in cost for your use case. 
when I work with videos, the most important advantage that I see with the iPad Air 5 is the USB-C port, which allows me to edit right off of an external SSD with LumaFusion. That means that I don't need to copy all those huge files onto my iPad and then fill up my internal storage. This feature is only available for iPads that have a USB-C port, so unfortunately, it's not something that I can do with the iPad 9. The iPad Air 5 comes with eight gigabytes of RAM versus three gigabytes on the iPad 9, but in terms of wake from sleep, working with multiple apps in split view or slide over, and just the general responsiveness of the iPads, I didn't notice a significant difference. Now I've used both with Sidecar, which is an Apple feature that allows you to use your iPad as an additional external display for your MacBook, your Mac, or your iMac. Both worked great for me, and I'm gonna give the slight edge to the iPad Air 5 because of the larger and higher resolution display. Looking at battery life, both iPads are rated for 10 hours of surfing the web on Wi-Fi or watching video, and then nine hours when using cellular data. I'm working on an updated battery test, but if you wanna see how the iPad 9 compares to every other current iPad, I'll link to that video at the end of this one, and I'm curious to know if you can guess the results. Now, I love gaming on a tablet because I get a larger display than on my phone, and then at the same time, I pretty much always have a tablet with me, so whether I'm traveling or just waiting in line, I can always jump into a quick game. As far as the gameplay itself, when playing PUBG, I didn't really notice a difference at all. Gameplay was smooth and responsive, and I was able to use the same graphics settings for both, so smooth, or balanced for graphics if I wanted extreme frame rate, and then Ultra HD graphics if I was willing to go to Ultra for frame rates. Other games like Genshin and Asphalt, and then of course less demanding games, also ran great on both devices. And the one reason why I would still give the edge to the iPad Air 5 here is because it has a more powerful processor and more RAM, so as games become more demanding and more resource intensive, we've got more headroom with the iPad Air 5. I also paired both iPads with my Xbox controller, and then I used the Xbox Game Pass app to stream games, and in both cases, as long as I had a fast internet connection, gameplay was smooth, and I didn't notice any type of lag or skipped frames. We talked a little bit about the audio earlier in the video, but when it comes to gaming, you have to make a choice. If you play your games using the speakers, then the iPad Air 5 is the clear winner. It has stereo speakers, so the sound is better. They also offer superior directionality to the sound so that you can hear where footsteps or other sounds are coming from. On the other hand, if you wanna use wired headphones or a wired headset, then you have to give the edge to the iPad 9 because it still has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in the corner. Now I can use the iPad Air 5 with a hub or a dongle, but it sometimes gets in the way of how I wanna hold the iPad and I've run into in-game echo issues with several different headsets. One thing that we know for sure is that games are going to use up a lot of your storage and both iPads are available with 64 or 256 gigs of internal storage. The iPad 9 starts at $329 and the iPad Air 5 starts at $599. I'm using the official prices from the Apple store, but you can usually find better deals by using the links in the description. Now, personally, I wanted to see the iPad Air 5 start with 128 gigabytes of internal storage and then be offered with 512 gigabytes for the higher end model, because Apple already has that M1 chip configuration available for the 11 inch iPad Pro. And I think that it would have just been a better value for a device that's released in 2022. The iPad Air 5 does offer better wireless connectivity options with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0 versus Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.2 on the iPad 9. And if you opt for the cellular options, then the iPad Air 5 offers 5G versus 4G LTE on the iPad 9. Overall, the more expensive iPad Air 5 has an updated premium design with smaller bezels and a newer implementation of Touch ID. It has a more powerful port, speakers on both sides, and a fully laminated display with more accurate color reproduction. It offers a better stylus user experience with the second generation Apple Pencil. You get compatibility with the Magic Keyboard, a better rear-facing camera, a much more powerful processor, and more than twice the RAM. For about half the price, the iPad 9 offers a very similar size and a very similar overall user experience. It's got the same storage options, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and then replacing a damaged display is likely to cost you less. Hopefully this video helps you make a decision. Now you should watch this iPad battery drain test. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck.
and see you soon.